I'd, um, I'd recommend that everyone gets one of these. <laughs> They're terrific in the night. <laughs> and, um, I'd like to say um, to everyone who's turned up today, and um, for me and my family, my friends, I'd like to welcome you to Jara Jara country. Central Victoria. G'day, I'm Jerry Gill. I teach a course on landscape and indigenous history at La Trobe University, Bendigo. Uncle Brian Nelson, the Jara elder, and I are working together to produce a number of films on the Jara culture and Jara occupation of the region. And today we're going to be joining him to visit a greenstone axe quarry. And uh, greenstone. Greenstone is the material that people used, Aboriginal people used, to make these beautiful stone axes. You can see that it's got a lovely edge on it and nice and smooth. And uh, it had to be a very special stone because it had to be able to take that edge, it had to be able to resist shattering on impact because it was used to heavy duty things like cutting notches in trees. Now, I want to read you something about how tomahawks were used. And this is from a book by Robert Bruff Smythe, uh, The Aborigines of Victoria. It was published in 1870. And he actually saw these things with his own eyes. He was a good observer. And he writes, the tomahawk is one of the most useful implements possessed by the Aborigines. A man never leaves his encampment without his hatchet. With its help, he ascends trees almost as rapidly as a native bear can climb. He cuts a notch for his toes, and placing the hatchet between his teeth so as to set his arms free, ascends one step, cuts another notch, and so on, until he reaches the height that he desires. The rapidity with which he climbs and his dexterity would surprise a stranger. Having got there, they would tap the tree with the tomahawk and find the hollows and chop through and grab the possum, give it a quick flick and throw it down to the ground. We can go to places now, not many of them are left, where we can see trees that still bear the scars cut by Aborigines when they're climbing those trees for possums. But when George Augustus Robinson, the Aboriginal protector, was passing through this country in the 1840s, he said that almost every tree he passed had scars on them, uh, very fresh ones from Aborigines climbing up. It showed that the country was in their active possession. With the stone axe, he cuts open limbs of trees to get out honey and grubs and eggs of insects, cuts off sheets of bark for his maimai or canoes, cuts down trees and shapes the wood into shields or clubs or spears, cuts to pieces larger animals of the chase, if necessary, and strikes off flakes of stone for inserting into the spearheads and for skinning beasts and for cleaning the skins. 
With an old tomahawk, he will shape from a rough block of stone a new tomahawk. Its uses are so many and so various that one cannot enumerate them. It's sufficient to say that a native could scarcely maintain existence in Australia if deprived of this implement. These axe blanks were what was produced by the quarrymen. And we know about their value because we were told by Barak, the Wurundjeri elder, and uh, his uncle Bill Bellary was the custodian of one of the most famous quarries. And Barak tells us that when people came to trade in order to get this valuable material, they would get three axe blanks and to get it they would have to exchange one of these great possum skin cloaks. These are absolutely beautiful things. This is one made by Uncle Brian's daughter, Justice Nelson. She got the possum skins and sewed them together and it's a lot of work. You can just imagine how much effort would require. And these possum skin cloaks were made up of 60, 70 or, or 80 skins. So they represent a huge amount of work. They too were a very important technology in the cold Victorian climate. People would wrap themselves in them. You can see these wonderful images of proud men standing in a line wrapped in their possum skin cloaks and Barak himself constantly drew men in their possum skin cloaks. He loved their monumentality and their dignity. Now, uh, the cloaks were not just significant because of their outside. On the inside they were often covered with beautiful designs which were scratched incised into the possum skin. It meant that a person was not just wrapped in a cloak to keep them warm, they were wrapped in their dreamings, in the designs that were so meaningful to their culture and their religious symbolism. Now, one possum skin cloak, all the work that that represents gets you three axe blanks that the person would then take and sharpen themselves. And uh, they would put it into a, uh, a specially prepared stick, a piece of wattle, as it's very fibrous and bends easily. They'd heat it up over a fire to soften it. It would, as we can see, it would be wrapped around bound with sinew, held in with wattle glue, and it was sufficiently well held in the little groove that's uh, been carved in here in order to stick within the handle. Well, that's the background knowledge we need. We'll go now and join Uncle Brian out of the quarry. Well, we're standing here in a jarra greenstone quarry and uh, Brian's going to explain to me how this very precious resource greenstone was manufactured into these beautiful axe heads. So Brian, how was this very very hard material turned from a quarry like this into this thing? Well first off uh, Jerry Aboriginal people back before 1840 and times like that tried all types of stone to see whether the flake good enough to be a knife, finger knife, a scraper or a spear point. Then they come across this ridge of green granite, the hardest of the lot. And finally they got a way of, thought of a way of using it like with these boulders laying around here, the bigger ones, dug out of the ground with sharpened big poles and prized up and rolled out of the 
outside of here to where it was workable. Then they built a fire on it. When that stone got hot, they tipped water on it. Therefore, it broke into smaller pieces. They kept doing that till they got it down to a smaller piece. They can use another piece of green granite to chip that other one into a blank, perfect blank. And that was traded interstate and into South Australia and well into New South Wales because it was the hardest stone axe head you could find. Well, you, you know, you'd, the amount of work an axe head has to do, you know, you think of a steel axe now, it'd have, people would be using it to cut hand and toe holds in trees to get oh, up yeah. and yeah, get possums. Sure. So. Mm. Well, but it also, once they got it to a blank, that person took it home from wherever he come from because of trade, and you'd have to start grinding it on coarse sandstone mm. to start breaking the corners down and getting them rounded. Then, once you got it to a certain thing, you'd take it further on to another finer sandstone, uh, using a bit of water, of course, in a Kurlaman dish. And that's what finally gave him this smooth finish. And an axe head, you must be able to look at it like that and roll it. And that blade should be just one line. Mm. And mm. you do that to that and you can see that it's, it's one perfect line. It's just absol absolutely beautiful. So the people who did this were real technical experts. You know, they had to be able to judge the how hot to get the rock oh, before yes, you sluiced yeah. it on. And yeah, for sure. Mm. Let's, let's go and have a look at another stage where this stone was worked, just yep. outside the quarry here. Yep, sure. Lead the way. Let's, let's have a look at this stone. So this is another yeah. stage of the manufacturing process yeah, there. Yeah, it is. This is where they start getting the blanks into shape for good trade that one even all around that'll probably make a good axe blank okay so but what you have what, to chip it off so what would be the next stage what next stage is using a uh, oh, hard piece of rock and to go around it two or three times so you get that uneven gold so this, the, but that's that's a process yeah. anyway and so looking around uh, behind us here the reason that there's so much um, big debris here is that they've chipped off and rejected a lot of big pieces to get to those really... Yeah, um, well they've left a lot of rubbish there but it's up to the next person who takes more off it to pick out the size he think and stones he think he'd work down into a better blank. Yep. So that's why when we go round the hill looking at these other piles they Each seem to smaller get a little finer until you get down to fine little yep. chips in the finishing workshop. That's it, yeah. yeah. Oh. It is slow, and they had time. Yep. And of course they were masters, and come up with the perfect thing in the finish. Mm. So that's why people valued them so highly, and why you find rock from this region right across into South Australia, and New up South past Wales. the Murray, New South Wales. Yes, valued product. Mm. And very much sought after yeah. by other tribes. Yeah. And they'd trade stuff they had that these people down here didn't have. Mm. Like so, reed spears lighter and throw them further and all that sort of thing. Mm. So it must have had real prestige. <laughs> even this stuff. Even shells from down the coast. Mm. Like uh, um, what do they call them? Oysters and 
oyster shells and big shells that they use for scraping the inside of possum skin coats. Oh, right, yep. Like big mussel shells. Yep. And that's how they carved into the skin in the possum skin coat. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's why we don't find many axe uh, blanks uh, lying around no. for gold. In such a big work site of, like this, you'd think they'd be laying everywhere. Because mm. mm. they would have left left this in a hurry because of settlement. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> can't even find one. Mm. It looks like a good, but this good size People blank. would have been working this site right up until the Europeans Oh, invaded the definitely, country. Definitely. Hmm. definitely. There would have been people sitting behind these anvil stones yeah. working away. Yeah, several people. Hmm. Others in the quarry itself prizing it out and rolling it down here where these people can just get it from there to there. Hmm. Others getting the firewood to build fires over them and hmm. as soon as they're hot, hmm. tip a bit of water on they crack into smaller hmm. pieces. Hmm. So this is a whole team whole of team experts effort. yep. working together to produce this yeah. uh, really high quality material that eventually goes to make um, the finished product. Yeah, the key technology of the culture. And each person who finishes that axe hmm. can tell it from anybody else's axe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all know their own work. Yeah, that's marvellous, isn't it? It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, a special place. Yeah.